Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your night is going great. Mine's been pretty good. I'm done traveling. I've been on the road all day and I did make a video while I was in the car. That's just what I got to do to stay on that double upload grind, guys. I'm completely committed. Anyways, today we have a juicy video. So we're starting off with XQC. So he responded to Poco or just said something about Team France. <laughs> it was definitely vulgar. It was definitely interesting and it was most definitely juicy, guys. So we're going to take a look at that clip and we're going to talk a little bit about Team Canada and how far I think they can actually go because I think they're one of the best World Cup teams right now, in my opinion. Just looking at their overall roster, they don't have any weaknesses so we're going to get into that guys and then after that guys we are going to be taking a look at Dak's statement about San Francisco Shock and Overwatch League season one I was supposed to read it off yesterday but that video went well over 20 minutes so we kind of cut it a little short so today we're going to be taking a look at that and just like IDDQD's post it's pretty emotional and there's some really good insight on Overwatch League season one for the San Francisco Shock and that's pretty much going to be the video guys so if you're excited to watch be sure to drop a like on it Subscribe to my channel for more daily content, whether you want the juice, whether you want to stay updated on Overwatch League news, this is your channel. And now without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the video. So starting off with what XQC said about Team France, uh, I want to warn you guys, you know, it's a little graphic, but here's the clip. Team France will win it all, huh? If Team France will win it all, huh? If Team France wins it all World we'll Cup, I will oh my. cut my dick and put it in my ear. And I'm act like my ear is a fucking meat grinder and make a fucking dick burger out of my other ear. Not even kidding. No cap. Hmm, yeah, that was definitely very interesting, huh, guys? So clearly, with what XQC just said, he does not think Team France has a chance at all to win the World Cup this year. And to be honest, like, I don't think they'll win it either. But the thing is, this year, there's so many talented teams. Any of the top five teams could potentially win it. Obviously, for everyone, South Korea, or at least most people, South Korea is the favorite. I do think they're going to win. It's like a 70% chance. But then there's Canada with Agilities and Surefour, then Team USA with Space and Muma, Finland, Taimu, Linkser, uh, just so many talented players. They got the supports of the LA Gladiators. Shaz and Bigus are insane. Not to forget that Finland literally almost beat South Korea in a very sloppy match, which proves that Finland definitely could have came out on top of that. And then of course, Team France, which XQC is talking about, who I do think has a chance. It's possible. They could pull it off. Soon, Unco, AKM, like these guys have a lot of experience together. They just have that right tournament where everything falls in place for them definitely could win and again that goes for any of these top five teams they're so damn good talent stacked so now let's go and take a deeper look at the canadian roster let's just go ahead and go over the starting seven to begin with for dps we have sure four agilities and mangachu mangachu will probably come off the bench while agilities and sure four start those two can cover pretty much any dps hero sure four has all the hit scan down he's even got projectile down sure four is good he's golden he'll play anything for team canada and thrive on it then we have agilities the projectile projectile god we're talking hanzo genji farah especially farah he got so good at farah at the end of the season and that's kind of why i don't think team canada should run mangachu that much because agilities will just cover the farah and i do think he's better at it anyways moving on over to the tanks for off tank we have note from the boston uprising literally in my opinion a top three off tank from the overwatch league season one and at certain times i honestly thought he was an mvp the fact that he came out of nowhere and was as good as he was incredible and then moving on to the main tank good old xqc who you guys all obviously know had a rocky start to the overwatch league season one pretty much got kicked out and banned but he's back to compete in the world cup and honestly he might be the only weakness of this roster but like he's still a question mark we don't know if he'll be a weakness or if he'll be a strength he could definitely be either or because we've seen him compete and when he is comfortable and he's in his zone he's really good i mean he was the mvp last year of the world cup you know, maybe it was kind of a meme and everybody voted for him just because it's XQC. He's still the MVP and he played pretty good and he led Canada all the way to the finals against South Korea. I really think it depends on who you ask. 33% of people would say XQC is going to pop off and he'll absolutely carry Canada. 
Then another 33% will say, oh yeah, he's a question mark. We don't really know what he's going to do. He'll probably just be average since he's been out of the league in the scene for a while now. And then the other 33% will be like, oh, XQC's trash. He hasn't played. He deserves to be banned. Blah, blah, blah. We're a bunch of haters. That's pretty much what you'll find with XQC. I hope he does have a good performance because if he does, Canada is going to go very deep and they have a chance at winning. And I've been saying this for a couple weeks now. Their roster is absolutely stacked. Starting off with those DPS players, sure for an agilities will be the biggest reason why this team goes deep and i don't want anybody to forget about note guys he was incredible for boston uprising without him they would not have been as good as they were obviously if they didn't have gams or if they didn't have striker they wouldn't have been that good either but note was right up there with striker with one of the most valuable players on that team you guys seen during the season sometimes boston uprising was sub in kalios and whenever he was in they didn't do that good and that's why we never really seen kalios again and note was the full-time starter for most of the season so those are the tanks for Canada, and I do think a lot right on their shoulders. As I said, sure Foreign Agilities will show up. The question is, is XQC going to be there? And now let's go to move on to their supports. So starting off with the flex player, this one is a big surprise to a lot of people. They expected to see Rolf from the Los Angeles Gladiators Legion, but this year, it's going to be Crimzo. Now, personally, I have a lot of experience with Crimzo. He played on a Kungarna roster with me for a couple months. He's a very good player. And I'll tell you guys this, he is very determined. When he gets an opportunity to prove himself, he's going to take it. I remember him being on my team. He told me he got a chance to trial for Envision. And I said, hey man, go for it. And he put all his effort into it and they wanted him so badly. And now he's on Team Envy with them and also Team Canada. So now that he has the opportunity to show off his skills in the World Cup and potentially get Overwatch League trials for Season 2, you know he's going to pop off, at least I do. So stay on lookout for Crimzo, guys, he's going to pop off. And then moving on to their main support, the Mercy player or whatever's going to be meta is going to be Bonnie from the Houston Outlaws. And I don't really got to say much about Bonnie. He was a solid player throughout the regular season. Houston Outlaws, I don't really think they had any issues with him. If Houston was having any issues with their supports, it was usually coming from Rockus, at least later on into the season. Rockus did play good early in the first two stages. Something happened. He maybe started getting focused more. I don't know if people figured something out about just killing him and diving him. But he was dying a lot. And for Bonnie, he never really got picked off really. Never died a lot. Was usually surviving and keeping people like Amuma alive. As well as Lynxer. So Bonnie's definitely a solid player here. I think he'll perform really well for Team Canada. So that's the whole Canadian roster. Pretty much broke down every player individually. Hopefully you guys know a little bit more about them. And I do think they have a really good shot at going very deep. Definitely more than France. Yeah, France is good. But Canada, they just have these all-stars. I don't know. I'm really hyped on Agilities and Sure4 right now. I just feel like near the end of Season 1 for both of them, they started popping off and they were coming into their own. Two of the strongest Western DPS players. As I said already in this video, they can play anything, guys. I don't think they're going to have any problems with the meta. And there's no one in the World Cup, really, who can challenge them besides Libero and Carpe. And Libero hasn't been playing that well all the way since, like, Stage 4, middle of it in the Overwatch League. It's so, like the door is wide open for them. If these two can pop off and carry Team Canada, they might be able to win the Cup. The group is coming up real soon, guys. September 7th, United States. It's going to be insane. Obviously, they don't have that competitive a group. Brazil, Switzerland, Norway, Austria. Eh, like, they're not going to be able to compete with Canada. But USA, we have that huge matchup coming, and I cannot wait. There's been a lot of trash talk, and this game is going to determine which team is actually better. And I do feel like Canada is going to win still. So be sure to let me know down below in the comments who you guys think will win, Canada or USA. What do you think about XQC's response to Poco and Team France? I thought it was hilarious. I don't know what he's saying, but it's still funny. And now let's go ahead and move on to the second half of this video and take a look at Dak's statement about Overwatch League and San Francisco Shock. A memorable but disappointing first season. Dear Overwatch fans, I'd like to share my experience from the inaugural season of the Overwatch League and tell the story of the ups and downs of being a player in the San Francisco Shock. First things first, I would really like to thank all of my teammates, Sinatra, Super, Nomi, Baby Bay, Moth, Architect, IDDQD, Sleepy, Dante, Nevix, and Choi Hobin for being supportive and helping me become a better player just by being awesome human beings. Next, I would like to thank every single staff member. Andy, Brett, Harsha, Jamie, Sefi, Legit, Junk, Krusty, 9K, Chris, Pizzas, David, JB, and Derek for tolerating and helping us develop as players and individuals. Finally, a huge thanks to each Overwatch League staff member, every fan that showed up to support in any way, the Shock Squad, Tyler, etc, etc, etc. Without your help and support, it would have been infinitely harder. 
As the start of Overwatch League Season 1 approached, it was very evident that Mercy slash Zen was going to be meta. In a team with a limited eligible roster of 6 players and pretty much zero experience playing Mercy and scrims, I had to grind really hard to learn the hero as quickly as possible to not let my teammates down. The players and staff members that were with us during our Vegas phase know how hard I tried. Unfortunately, the conditions were not ideal for me to learn the role at the required speed. The evolution of a new dive and anti-dive meta with the lack of comfortable projectile player made Made it particularly hard for me to figure out what my job was at all times. It wasn't until the end of stage 1 with that match against Florida Mayhem where I got my first player of the match and I finally understood why my mercy play was so lackluster. It was at that time when I realized the necessity of being a selfish player whenever I was on mercy. See the thing is, with pretty much all other support heroes in overwatch, you have to try to remain alive while healing and supporting your teammates as much as possible. However, mercy requires someone who cares about themselves first, above all others, Zenyatta, after, and then only then, if you're able to bring back teammates, resurrect. If you ever play Mercy and see teammates taking damage out of line of sight, and your body itches for you to go help your teammates, you're doing it wrong. Needless to say, this was against every single instinct I have as a player. Those who have played with me know how good of a teammate I can be in game. And that was it. With the introduction of Moth to the team, I was moved to substitute position where my only goal was to learn from what Moth did better than me, such as feed less and track ults, and try to incorporate said skills into my game. By far my biggest disappointment in season 1 is not having played a single minute on stage with Sinatra. I don't think I will ever find natural synergy with a player like I have with Sinatra. It's like we have the same mind, scary in a good way. Even at the same time when Sinatra, Baby Bay, and me were playing internal scrims on Team B and stomping Team A, I still didn't get a single minute with him on stage. Not everything was bad about Season 1 though. I learned a lot from spectating scrims and watching top tier support players' point of view from top down perspectives of team fights. It helped me understand the game at a deeper level. I got to play against the best of the best in scrims and stage matches. I helped teammates and got helped from teammates and coaches countless times to improve each other as players and individuals. I shared great memories with every single member of the Shock family, we laughed and we got mad together. It was definitely an enlightening ride and I would do it again in a heartbeat. For those of you that do not know, I've been playing video games since I was 3 years old until I was 17, competing in CS since I was 9 years old, which is Counter Strike, and until I was 17, and at the age of 18, I picked up poker and became a professional poker player. Every time I would watch a Counter Strike Major, my body would itch, telling me to go back to gaming. When I tried Overwatch for the first time, it was a wrap. Competing at the highest level of Overwatch is all I dreamed of, and I haven't shown the world what I'm capable of, so I'm not done yet. My biggest accomplishment this season was earning the respect of Overwatch League Season 1 champions as a Lucio player. I do not think many Lucio players in the world can do stuff like this, contest point because no one else can, evade Dragon Blade, build and turn the team fight with a beat, while being able to play Ana and other supports at a high level. I'm confident I can be an asset to any Overwatch League team and look forward to keep doing what I love. My only focus right now is trying to help Team Spain do good in the World Cup, looking forward to what the future has to offer. Dax. So there it is guys, Dax's final words about San Francisco Shock and Season 1 of the Overwatch League. It definitely wasn't the best run for him, but as he said, he's still confident in his abilities and he's going to keep grinding and trying until he makes it and proves himself. So good for him. The good thing is though, he does have a great opportunity with Team Spain in the World Cup. If he can prove himself in the World Cup, he'll definitely get some trials for the Overwatch League or at least contenders. But if he ends up flopping and not playing that good, I don't know man, Dax didn't have that great of a performance last season. So we'll just have to see what happens for him, guys. Be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about Dak, pretty much this whole video, and that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to drop a like on it. If you enjoy my content, don't forget to click the red subscription box. And that's it for me, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.